All right, welcome. Today is day nine of Advent of Code. Okay, so a couple of updates. Um, first of all, I I realized that I was really lucky on part two yesterday. I didn't realize that you could you could swap either jump or no op. I thought that you could only replace with a no op. It just so happened that replacing with a no op was the right answer for my input. But uh, I fixed up my code so that if it's a jump, then it switches it, tries to switch it to a no op and, and runs it. Um, and if it's a no op, it tries to switch it to a jump. Yeah, so uh, that, that was, I mean, I, I got lucky. Good thing it wasn't the, um, the case where I had to, to look and see that I had to replace with a jump. Um, so I, I've kind of been looking at my uh, performances over the past few days. As I mentioned on stream yesterday, my incremental time for part two was actually pretty good yesterday. That was really good. Part one was just too slow. And when I kind of looked at the stream, the biggest things that I saw were just not reading the problem description well enough. Um, like literally just skipping parts that were bolded for me, you know, that's kind of unacceptable, I think. So today that's going to be the focus. Um, part one and part two, read and understand before trying to start implementing if it is though the the one the one caveat to that is if it's another thing that is very similar to this i'm probably gonna pretty much assume that i'm gonna have to implement that so i might go ahead and just start i'm not sure though we'll have to see um i have a feeling it won't be this i think we're going to be back to regex or graph problem or both um, and I'm hoping it's a little bit longer of a problem because then I'm able to catch up, um, uh, you know, it takes me, uh, just a little bit to get to the point where I'm ready to solve generally. So hopefully I can make up some time if it is just a slightly longer problem. Um, and amortize my slowness across um, a, a wider, wider range. Okay, so if we need the 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 uh, the machine, then that's above. It's all up here um, for day nine. Otherwise, we're just going to start down here. I did update. Um, my scripts so now it um, we have the input in its own folder I think that's that's about it um, welcome if you're joining from YouTube I stream this over on twitch every uh, every evening and I'd love to have you join five four three two one Zero. Port gives you numbers.
Okay, let's pull this example. Which is not the sum of two previous numbers. Okay, so um, let's do okay. Um, current equals sequence up to 25, then if seek i does not equal for a and seek for b and seek if sum of Return i, i plus equals one. Then uh, current equals current the head, so one onward plus seek i. I'm gonna go for this and see what I get. Oh my gosh, yes, okay. Um, Continuous set of at least two two numbers, which sum follow smallest and largest and add them. Okay, so I need to uh, first of all let's do this and then let's go down here. So for part two, basically um, start and equals zero comma two. Zero comma one, I guess. Um, no, for s in range len seek for end in range uh, s len sequence print s comma e okay um sum if sum uh seek S colon E plus one equals equals this number, I guess. Um, max of that plus min of that.
Um, okay. Wait, it gave me an answer that time. Oh, that was really good. That was really good. Let's see. That was so good. That was amazing. Oh, yes. I should have just gotten rid of that print. That really killed me. That that lost me a good almost minute. Wow, that went really well. That went so well. Um, okay, so what's going on here? Um, so first of all, the problem is basically asking Um, so you're supposed to keep a rolling window of what numbers can be used to create the future numbers. So, um, that's what this preamble sees us with. The first 25 numbers gives us a set of numbers that we can use and sum together two of them to get a another number in the sequence. So 26 is valid because it's 1 plus 25, um, 2 plus 24, etc. Right. So uh, we have to find the one that's not the sum of two of the 25 numbers before it. Um, and so the question is, what's the first number with that does not have this property? So effectively, what's going on here is I'm I'm putting the current sequence into current. Um, I'm putting the first 25 numbers into current. So this keeps track of the first 25. And then I'm just doing a while loop because I didn't want to figure out a for loop. Um, and basically, then I'm going through and figuring out for each of the subsequent numbers, starting at i equal 25, so the 26th number, um, I'm just doing an O of n squared algorithm here to just go through all of the different pairings of a and b. Um, so all of the a's in current and all the b's in current. I got really lucky here, actually, because Yeah, I actually got really lucky here because I forgot there's a rule that the two numbers in the pair must be different. So I really need I really need an enumerate here. And then j less than k to new. And that should give me the right answer here. Let's do this before I forget. OK, so this is O of n squared, but it's not that bad. This is constant. This is you know 25 times 25, so. Um, 600, 600 iterations for a thousand, a thousand uh, numbers. It's not that bad. And then basically, so I'm calculating is a plus b equal to um, the current thing that we're looking at. So that's this i equals twenty five thing. If it is, then it is the sum of one of the past twenty five numbers. So we break. And if it isn't the sum of one of the past 25 numbers, then we know that this is the number that we care about, and we return 
we return it. Um, so that's what this is doing. Apparently that's the first one that doesn't match the, the sequence. Um, and then because it's a sliding window problem, basically what I'm doing is I'm chopping off the first element of the list and then adding on the, the last element, the new, the current element that we're looking at, um, to the current list so that then the next iteration at the loop, I'm still doing the same stuff here. Guys, that was amazing. That was like actually super awesome. Let's copy this. Actually, let's just see here before I go on to part two. What was the when did the leaderboard close today? So I needed to be another minute faster. Minute and minute and nine seconds. Yeah, I wasn't getting that. <laughs> was not getting anywhere close to that. That was like really fast though, guys. I probably should have shaved off another 30 seconds, but I'm, I'm happy enough with how that went. Okay, so let's look at the debacle, which was part two. So what part two is asking us is to find a contiguous set of at least two numbers, uh, which sum to the invalid number from step one. So, Basically, this is another, what, how I thought of it was like a, a problem where you have the start and the end of your sequence. And then you, I, I'm just doing a, a scan of like, cause there's, there's only the contiguous sets. You can enumerate them in O of N squared time using this sort of a technique. You basically have a start and you have an end and you just iterate your end from where your start is to the very end of the list. Then you increment your start by one, do the same thing to the end of the list, increment, go to the end, increment, go to the end. That's O of n squared. Um, so it's also slow, but it's fine. Um, uh, I, I can, so then this is actually really, this is O of n cubed because I'm not only uh, O of n maybe to the fourth. No, no. Oven, oven cubed, because this is this sum is also an n squared operation, as are these max and min operations. So this is like three n. This is you know all of n, all of n. But then these are um, these are in in series. So so the whole thing is. Let me let me just annotate this whole thing. It's like three or something, three n cubed, something like that. It's pretty bad, but it's effective and it's, you know, it took one and a half seconds or something. Um, so the, the idea basically, again, find uh, find that go from the start to the end. So that's what this guy is doing. Sequence start to end plus one. You have to do the end plus one because that's the, the Python way to, to, to do it, to have the inclusive range. And if it's equal to this, then, uh, then just return the max plus the min. And this is where Python comes in real handy. Like, you know, also, reading the problem description comes in real handy, like reading this, for example, super good. Really, really good. Um, and then uh, just sum them together and return them once I find, once I find the sequence. Um, again, I think being able to return has been really useful. I did get bit by having that print. Well, I don't, I don't actually understand what happened here. What happened? Wait, so 
Oh, oh, it's actually just that I I did the tr I tried to do the run test thing. That cost me maybe 30 seconds. Again, it wouldn't have affected my the the leaderboard. Okay. That was really good. That was super good. And not only did I get part 1 in a reasonable amount of time, you know, this was the first under 300 performance. Um, but I also um, had my first under 500 performance, and I got a really good rank on this. Um, and I, my incremental time was also not too shabby. It was like three minutes, three and a half minutes. Okay. Um, can we clean this up? Let's just... Let's just uh, push this. Um, okay, so is there a trick to optimize this? Um, let me, let me, let's see here. So, um, current sum, yeah, maybe like current equals M list and then current dot append sequence at s plus e and then if some plus equals that if current sum equals this then return max of current min of current let just oh um Oh, um, see, this is why I didn't do this when I was actually solving the problem, because it's just too complicated to, to do this. It's just, it, it's just not worth it. Um, uh, this was a bit slow, but effective. Um, and then the other thing that I can do here is current min equals... this current um, let me I just realized I should add to my template a quick little constants and that gives me infinity just in case I ever need it. Um, seems like it should be useful. Um, and then, so let's let's stop doing the array indexes so much. 
and then do equals C current men equals men current men C And then something along those lines. Oh, shoot. Um, yeah, and that's like way faster um, because I'm avoiding this O of three and This is now just n. This is just a straight up n squared. Um, so I've 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 shaved off an extra fact um, pow, uh, factor of n. So I think I like that a lot better. I'm gonna leave this. Okay, I think I'm gonna call it there. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give a thumbs up. And come over and follow me on Twitch where I'm streaming this every single day. I'll be at it tomorrow for day 10. Thanks, everyone.